I had a question the other day from somebody about avascular necrosis of the hip. It's easier just to abbreviate it to AVN, to be honest. What is it? Well, let me explain. Nearly all of the tissues in our body have a blood supply. Arteries bring in the oxygenated blood and veins take it away after the oxygen has been released. If for some reason the oxygenated blood can't get to where it's supposed to be, then the cells stop functioning and eventually they die. This can often take just a few minutes. This happens if you have a stroke, say, or a heart attack. What about the hip, though? Well, the head of the femur, the ball part of the joint, has a blood supply that travels up the neck of the femur. If there's a problem with the blood flow, then the bone cells die and they lose their mechanical strength. The weight-bearing part of the head collapses and this causes pain and disability. So avascular means without a blood supply and necrosis is cell death. AVN of the hip can happen spontaneously, what we call idiopathic. This just means we don't know what the cause is. It can also be caused by an injury like a fall, especially if the bone breaks. Other causes include drinking too much alcohol and more commonly if you take high doses of steroids. Not everyone who does these things gets AVN, so there must be some genetic factors that play a part, just like everything else that affects our health. Some blood conditions like sickle cell disease can also cause AVN. This mainly affects people who live in sub-Saharan Africa, but also people from the Mediterranean area and South India. If you develop AVN, then you'll probably end up having a hip replacement. If it's diagnosed very early, then it's possible to drill the bone to try and encourage new blood vessels to form, but I have to say it's not very successful. Some surgeons, including me, have used stem cells to treat AVN, but again, the results aren't predictable, nor are they very good in most cases. What about other causes of AVN? Well, the other day we celebrated my brother-in-law's birthday in a pub in Winchester. It's right in the city centre, a few minutes walk from the cathedral. The pub's called the William Walker, named after a commercial diver who worked tirelessly for several years repairing the foundations of the cathedral. It was sinking into the ground, was in danger of falling down. It's been around for nearly a thousand years. He wore a heavy diving suit weighing 200 pounds and worked in pitch darkness in 20 feet of murky water. It was full of old coffins and decomposed corpses. He saved the cathedral and was a local and national hero. The reason I mention this is because divers can get AVN of the hip and other bones. It's not common in recreational divers who don't tend to dive deep and long, but even so you've got to pay great attention to detail to avoid causing problems. If you've ever done a diving course then you'll know what all this is about. If you don't decompress properly then bubbles form in the blood and tissues causing the bends. The blood stops flowing and well, you know the rest. I can't find any evidence of whether or not William Walker had AVN. It's unlikely. He was the most experienced commercial diver of his time and he helped to write decompression tables, so he was clearly a man who understood the risks. Sadly, he died in the Spanish flu outbreak after World War I. If you're at risk of having AVN, say if you're a big drinker or you're on steroids and you start to develop pain in your hip, then the best advice is that you should speak to your doctor. You'll need to have some investigations, including x-rays and an MRI scan, to confirm the diagnosis and then take advice from an expert on the right treatment for you. I hope you found this helpful. If you'd like to know more about AVN, then please get in touch or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.